stunning view. See ya. This is where there was a bit of uh, breeze, wasn't there? A bit yeah, of yeah, probably coming off that hill that where yeah. it drops away there. Fantastic. There it is. Whoops, the bump. Yeah. And look at the way that land drops away, and we're already at 1,200 feet. So I can lose flappage. Stunning countryside. Visibility is amazing now, isn't it? One stage of flap gone. Two stage of flap. A little bit of trim. Quite a lot of trim actually. There we go. And we're in. We're settled. Nice, so it's a left hand circuit, so we've got to turn left. Just dip the nose, can't see anything. Out we go. What a privilege it is to be able to fly, eh? Yep. Absolutely stunning. If you're ever thinking about learning to fly, I recommend it to you. It's a fantastic hobby. Look at this. Look at this view. Right, remember what that looks like for next time we come, Carol, because I always find that difficult to spot. I don't know why. I think it's the uh, the way the runway, the slight camber, you can't see it. Yeah. I've landed it dozens of times. Uh, traffic looks like it's going under us. Oh, sorry, I got it, I got it. Yep, thank you. Well spotted. Oh, keep climbing. It's going under, isn't it? It's gone under yet. I'll watch him come out the other side. Did you see him go out under? Because I didn't. No. I haven't seen him. There he goes, there he is. this is low level Robin, very low, maybe going into strip somewhere. Right, we're alright, let's get this leveled off. T3. Still pump to come off. Transponders on. Nice. So you got to see the sea today, look at that over there. Yep. See the needles, heading spree head. Yeah, I'm going to be in the sea tomorrow. Rather you than me. That Robin's still down there, very low level. Must be going into a strip, look, can you see him? Let me, let no, me look, I can't really. see him. I'll turn, here we go. Oh yeah. Look at him. Crumbs. He's low. Yeah. As long as he stays low, doesn't come on me, us. Right then, okay, back to Chill Bolton then. And Copter Radio Golf Delta Bravo is uh, clear en route to the east. Thanks so much, see you again. Boston Radar Golf India Sierra Delta Bravo for basic service. Golf India Sierra Delta Bravo, Boston Zone, pass message. Golf India Sierra Delta Bravo, PA28 from Compton Abbas to Whitewall, the routing by Chill Bolt, uh, just airborne, and climb to 2,200 feet, request basic service and mass penetration. Golf Delta Bravo, basic service, squad 2650, Portland QNH 1028. 1028, the QNH and 2650, the squad Golf Delta Bravo. Golf Bravo, India, Portland, QNH, 1028. 1028, Golf Bravo, India, 3,000 speed, 1028. Right, we step 2,000, 1028. We should be safe. Golf, I think, put off to India Delta, requesting basic service and a map penetration. Nothing like a good map penetration. India Delta, Boston, then pass message. A golf to Oscar India Delta, PA28, Arrow, from Ben Bridge, currently Stony Cross on 1028 India Delta. Right, so it's basically the reverse flight as we did coming in, so nothing more to see here really. We'll stick the camera back on when we get to White Waltham. See if that's the same uh, issue when we land. It'll be interesting to see, won't it? In the meantime, we'll enjoy the flight. We'll speak to you in a moment. Alrighty, welcome back aboard. Uh, roll the time on about, I don't know, half an hour, 20 minutes, something like that. And we're just uh, approaching White Waltham now. We've got about 10 miles to run. Just off to the left of the aircraft, I can see Reading again here. And just off to the right, we've got um, a seagull or something, I can see below us. <laughs> and then we've got Wokingham as well, more significantly probably. So uh, the trick is going to be get ourselves positioned at White Waltham and land and see what happens with uh, 
with this engine on the rollout. So we just listened to Farber, I'm going to change to Waltham now, so let's do some radio stuff. So we've got nine miles to right, Waltham. Farber, right down. Waltham Radio, good afternoon. Golf India Sierra, Delta Bravo, back with you, Point Sierra for rejoin. Welcome back, it's 29 right hand circuit, QFE 1027. 1027, 29 right hand, Golf Delta Bravo. 027. Good, right, we've got our information. We can see the airfield on the nose. We're basically coming in at right angles to the wrong way that we want. Golf to the Bravo, downwind 29 for landing. Right, power back a bit. We're in the white arc, car beats are on. Get some flapping. Stage of flat. Did a trip. There's him coming to land. Right, there's two nine round we come. Yeah, he's going in. Danger zone. Right, I'm going to side slip it a little bit because I'm a bit high. Let's hope he gets off the runway because we may not have a go around opportunity. Looking good. Oh, he's up again. Come to the Bravo, short final, 2 9 for landing. Okay, we're right idle now. See, if it had done that at um, Compton, we'd have said, oh, carry on, wouldn't we? Yeah. Anyway, what can you do? Best to wear on the cautious. Well, if there's any doubt, there's no doubt. Exactly. That's the mantra. Right, so there we go. What? Didn't have a problem that time, but yeah. uh, safely back on the deck anyway. We live to fight another day, which is the most important thing. And uh, you can't mess about with the flying game, can you? Nope. So? It's not the first time we've been disappointed doing <laughs> no, this. No, it's not. At least we've got a flight, though. Yeah. And it was a nice day. Anyway, so that's it for the flying portion. This video's now gone from a flying video to a biking one. So Ooh, what a surprise! So Woo. from two wings to a new gold wing. See you on that. All right, well, good morning, folks, and uh, welcome to, well, Basingstoke, where we've just filled up the mighty new gold wing for the first time ever. We've been on the road for about an hour, uh, done maybe, I don't know, 50 miles or something like that. Just had a quick fill up. Uh, we've decided we're not going to go on the motorways and uh, try the A303 route, which will be interesting to see how that goes. Anyway, let's crack on, see how we get on. Right, before we get cracking, I'm just going to change the suspension to um, two riders. We didn't do this when we did the tour recently into Europe, because I was a bit worried that the bike might go too high, but let's, let's change it to, let's change the preload to two riders and luggage, which is what we've got. There we go. Oh, I can feel the bike going up a little bit. And we'll see uh, see how that goes. To navigation. There we go. Right, let's see how that works. Nothing around. So this particular road is the uh, A33 that links the... Uh, M4 with the M3 and it's just a little squirt that I quite like it's just some nice sweepy bends perfect goldwing territory M3 
and uh, perfect to try our big new bike out on. First proper ride we've had on it, first time Mrs Fly has been on it. So we'll get a little summary from her later on about how she's finding the, uh, the new seat and so on. Certainly we've already benefited from the slightly more luggage capacity in the boot, for want of a better word. Right, the bike has only done, well it's done 181 miles, when we left home we'd done 102, so in fact we've done 78, 79 miles. My maths is never good while I'm riding and talking at the same time. It'll be interesting to see what the bike thinks it's doing from a miles per gallon point of view when the trip's over, but by the time we get back from Perranporth, we will have done probably well over 600 miles, so she'll be ready for a first service, so that's quite useful. You know, what a difference a day makes, check out this weather look. Grey clouds. The wing is telling us it's 22 degrees and it is set to get to something like 24 today. We've got our mesh jackets on uh, and I have to say, feeling very comfortable. So the plan is we're just going to skirt around Basingstoke, a, a very quick bit on the uh, M3 and then join the A303, which is a road I normally hate in a car, but I'm quite keen to try on the bike and it also takes us past Stonehenge. So. Uh, for our international viewers that might be of some interest although I don't think you can see much of it from the road to be honest but we'll find out it's been a while since I went down there anyway we're going to settle back we've got uh, about 180 miles to do today until we get to that hotel and the whole point of this trip of us going on the wing having binned two wings is that we don't lose that 400 quid that we've spent on the hotel so let's hope the, uh, the hotel was worth it but we'll have a look at that a bit later right speak to you when we've got something interesting to show or say actually strike all those numbers I just told you I was completely wrong we've done 141 miles so far so that means we've done 38 miles since home I thought that seemed to be optimistic we've got a range of 179 miles having just filled up and we've still got 217 to go the bike saying three hours 40 minutes so we're gonna have a leisurely ride and we're gonna stop a few times for some coffees and lunch and stuff so we're kind of set in for the day for this ride what a difference it's going to be about six hours on the bike compared to two hours in the aeroplane. But hey ho, needs must. Ah, the wonders of Basingstoke. Somewhere I know very little about actually. It seems to get a bad press. I fly over it quite a lot, but I've never actually been in the centre of town. I've no idea what it's like. Maybe you can let me know if you live in Basingstoke whether it's worth a visit one day. Now I remember looking at that tower block from the aeroplane yesterday as we flew over. That's quite a big uh, landmark from the air in Basingstoke. It's bizarre because I know uh, this part of England way better by air than I do by road. So we just kiss the M3 for about five miles before we join the 303 and hopefully uh, a bit of a better ride off the motorways from now on. So on our right is Popham Airfield. Just see some aeroplanes parked up there, which we flew very close to on the way back yesterday. We actively tried to avoid it just off of the A303 here. So as we flew back last night, keeping our fingers crossed about the uh, engine on the aeroplane, <laughs> just off to the right here, obviously you can't see it because we've got this hedge, we flew past a crop circle and Mrs Fly took a couple of pictures out the window, well not out the window but, you know, well yeah out the window, and uh, it looked amazing from the air and uh, I just wonder why people who build those crop circles, I'm assuming it's not aliens that build them, why they do them so you can't actually see them from the road because they're quite beautiful, it's kind of wasted, it, it's over here somewhere but only us in the aeroplane got to see it so that was part of the privilege of flying and something you don't get when you're on the uh, two-wheeled wing so we're just coming past now it says army headquarters on this sign that's uh, off to our left is middle wallop which uh, we remember again from flying yesterday that was the uh, army helicopter base where we had to speak to Boscombe down to request a mats penetration well we don't have to do that on the motorcycle of course and the less said about any sort of penetration the better Okay, so off to our left here, just pop the screen down and show you. All these big buildings here, and off to the right you can see some bits and pieces as well. This is Boscombe Down, which is that uh, home I mentioned of the Empire Test Flying School back in the 1950s, and again where we flew past here yesterday. It's now owned, it's sort of subcontracted out to uh, defence contractors, but they still do a lot of the same work there in terms of test flying systems. So yeah, it looks a lot different from the ground, doesn't it? Right, a bit of a traffic jam now, because I've got a theory. We're just coming up to Stonehenge, and uh, 
it's always busy here because traditionally people used to slow down to look at stone engines they drove past and uh, I'm hoping you'll be able to see it with a GoPro it's a little way away there's a crowd of people you'll probably see it's just up here on the right in a minute all right so I've got an excellent view of the henge now uh, a very important place for us druids just up there on the top of the hill fascinating thing it's one of these sort of world heritage sites of course lots of mystery about what it's actually there for is it some sort of calendar is it some sort of timepiece is it some sort of landing pad for a UFO who knows but it's fascinating and it draws an awful lot of uh, tourists as well it's not actually sometimes I think it's a little bit disappointing it's a bit like well Niagara Falls it's uh, it's amazing but not quite as amazing as you'd think when you actually see it but nonetheless it is interesting and they're just dipping from view now and uh, yeah, the incredible thing about it is Mrs Fly was just reminding me in the headset that the stones actually they know came from Wales so the big mystery is, is how on earth did they move them from Wales a couple of thousand years ago so yeah quite an effort just to get them to this very spot anyway fascinating place right let's hope this uh, traffic thins out a bit once we're past it just a reminder from uh, Mrs Flyer that actually they're well more than 2,000 years old maybe four I don't know perhaps I should look it up and put it on the screen a lot of people there today would have been a lot busier a couple of weeks ago we're filming this back end of July and of course summer solstice is when everybody uh, crops up there anyway onwards it's when you get onto chunks of the A303 like this where I realised that actually it was a good move ditching the motorway. Some uh, very nice bits of scenery and occasionally you get a bit of open road now as soon as I turn the camera on you get a load of traffic again. The scourge of riding in southern England. But it is lovely around here. I mean check out this view to my right. Okay it's not rolling mountains but it's pretty flipping beautiful. Oh, check out this view. This was such the right decision to not go on the motorway. This is just absolutely stunning. If we could just lose these, lose these clouds now. Temperature-wise, it's nice. It's 22 degrees. We're in our summer jackets, and uh, I'm as warm as you like. I'm not uh, not in any way cold. But also, we put on some high-vis tabards today. You might have seen it earlier when uh, we were starting off on the bike when Mrs. Fly was at the garage. We've each got those on, and uh, that's not because we've suddenly become high-vis junkies, although. Know, it's hard to I guess argue against high vis but I, I'm not I'm not a, an exponent of them in particular I just think anything you can do to make yourself visible is a good idea but the main reason we put them on is because we thought it might just be a little bit cold as we started out in our uh, mesh jackets and it just stopped a bit of the wind uh, so yeah that's worked out a treat and then if we do need to take them off because it gets hot then they fold up to virtually nothing so uh, that's what that's all about just in the case you would uh, thought would become real ale advanced riders or something that was a joke by the way I'm, I'm sure advanced riders don't all drink real ale you know what I mean and there's nothing wrong with real ale either or indeed advanced riders right just a quick update for you 20 minutes on since I last spoke to you and uh, we're just coming up to uh, close to Compton Abbas actually where we flew to yesterday before we uh, decided to bail the uh, two winged option for the one wing option for this trip and it in itself is a biking destination as I mentioned yesterday in fact if it had been a little bit later it might have been today's lunch stop <laughs> once again a bit more cloudy today though I hope these burn off by the afternoon but uh, still lovely uh, riding temperature though at 23 now according to the mighty wing so we're trying to work out exactly where Compton Abbas airfield is we reckon it's just behind that ridge there because there's a mast there which I think is one of the comms towers on the airfield and then you can see here how this hill drops off at the edge see this bit of white chalk maybe can you see that at the end of the of the hill there the ridge I think that's where we took off and the ground flew away or, or dropped away from us and then as we departed we turned left out of here and back home before we picked up this wing I'm sure if we're wrong somebody will correct us but it looks pretty familiar of course the other thing that this uh, part of the world is famous for if uh, you're a YouTube fan is my old mate Del Boy he's based down in this area so if you're watching Del sorry I haven't popped in on this occasion I must catch up with you again soon at some point so a couple of things of interest just as we pass through on the 303 in this bit of busy traffic just off to our right can't see it now because the hedge is here there's uh, 
Glastonbury Tour, home of course to the famous, well the tour isn't, but Glastonbury is where the festival is of course, and off to our left is Yeovilton Air Museum, the Fleet Air Arm Museum, home of the Naval Collection, somewhere I've never been but want to go at some point. Traffic's a little bit obtuse now, great views though up here. So, as happens so often in this uh, YouTubing lot, my battery ran out just as the scenery was getting good. Anyway, it's about half past 12. We've done, um, I think about 150 miles. We've got about 110, 120 to go, something like that. We make good progress. We've been on the bike for three hours, so we thought it was time for a stop. We stopped here at this American bar and grill, Route 33. Uh, it was got this splendid view over here, look. And uh, yeah, the bike's doing really, really well. So if it's, uh, sort of inaugural trip, so far so good, but we'll have a chat to Mrs. Fly, who's in ordering some sarnies or whatever, and uh, let's see how she's found uh, this new seating arrangement and so on on the bike. <laughs> All right, so we've just eaten in the uh, in the diner there behind us. Uh, a little bit touch and go, what would you say? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't eat there again. Nothing to write home about. <laughs> well, it filled again, filled again. But, but the coffee was excellent. Anyway, look at us, we're like matching pair in our high vis and our little, what's it? You mean like, an old couple? Yeah, we're like an old couple on a gold aren't we? <laughs> Splendid. Blimey, perhaps we are an old couple on a gold wheel. Anyway, talking of which, how have you found the new beast, particularly the new perch on it? Uh, it's it's fine. I didn't have any problems with the old one, to be honest. So, um, it's absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I mean, it's bigger and wider and the back's raked differently, but yes. in, for, from a practical point of view, you as a pillion, no different. Uh, yeah. Okay, fair enough. And uh, also, if you remember, we changed the suspension setting as we were coming along to two riders and baggage and all that. Did you notice any difference? Um, it felt a bit smoother, but I might have been making it up. I felt, I felt the same. It, it felt a little bit smoother, which is odd, because I thought it would stiffen the suspension up. But actually, it just made the ride better, didn't it? So, yeah. don't know how that worked. Maybe it's in our minds, but it, it seems better. So, we'll leave it on that setting. Right, back on the bike then. Yep. Final push. Yes. Next stop. Perrin Pulse. 